Hi everybody, uh, welcome to the new video. Um, today we're going to be doing a little bit different for this month's recap. Instead of going through the movies that I watched in each month chronologically, I think I'm going to make it to where I'm going to rank every single film that I watched in this month. That way you can see everything and my own thoughts about it in a ranking because like I just I prefer rankings man I've been ranking stuff since I was in like fifth grade. I literally have like two whole notebooks dedicated to rankings. I mean I kid you not I love ranking. So I am think I'm gonna do that now. So yeah uh, March was a very short month. Uh, I did not see Dune part 2. I'm probably seeing it tomorrow at the time of filming this video. But yeah, with that being said, I got nothing else to say. Let's just kick it off with the number 14 spot. Okay, so unfortunately in last place, we have Bob Marley, One Love. Uh, now, I didn't absolutely hate this movie. In fact, I thought it was okay. There was some great stuff about it. The performances were all solid. The reggae scenes were great, as well as the soundtrack. But unfortunately, this just kind of suffered from being a very basic and unfocused biopic. The movie felt very choppy for me, and I honestly just wasn't invested as much as another biopic. And I honestly just wasn't really invested in the story, it, it was a very lukewarm story. And of course Bob Marley's influence is absolutely massive, and I'm not saying this movie didn't do that justice, it just kinda felt a bit basic. Next is A Life Less Ordinary. Now I'm going to save a lot of my thoughts on some of these because a lot of these are Danny Boyle films which I'm going to be ranking as soon as I finish all of his movies which I'm getting there. And A Life Less Ordinary is coming in at the bottom here. Doesn't mean it's his worst film but we're for this month it's his worst. And you know I actually like this movie. I I thought it was okay. It was decent. It was a fun, stupid little time that I just had fun with. Ewan McGregor, of course, steals the show, as he always does in every film he's in. And it really just doesn't do anything special, but it does the right amount to where it's, it's a watchable film. Okay, up next is The Zone of Interest. I watched this for the Oscars, and uh, I thought it was okay. It was good. It was okay. It was pretty good. Yeah. The movie was a bit slow. And that's just something that you gotta keep in mind. This movie just didn't do much to invest me, personally. The story is absolutely tragic. I mean, good lord, there's a home right next to a concentration camp. That's terrible. And I think the performances in this thing are all great. The dynamic between the husband and the wife. I mean, Sandra Hewler is incredible. Um, as she was as in, of course, Anatomy of the Fall. But, personally, I just never really found myself... I don't want to say caring because that seems a little mean but I just wasn't really invested. Now of course the sound and the audio in this film is incredible. I mean it definitely deserved that Oscar. There's so many scenes where there's just like very subtle audio moments, audio keys, and it's just like you hear the things happening in the back and sometimes it's not like pointed out. You can just hear it and it's amazing. I also really like the ambiguous ending on this one. It's just a very well told uh, good look into the perspective of a German family during the Holocaust. You don't get that that often. But personally, it just really wasn't my thing for most of the time. Next up at number 11, I watched Waves. This is a 2019 movie that has Sterling K. Brown in it and that's really the only huge thing about it. And the fact that there are so many pop culture songs in this movie. You got Kanye in there, you got Tyler, you got Kendrick, you got Frank Ocean, you have Kid Cudi, and it's just like, after, like it's over and over and over again. It's just like, I wasn't a huge fan personally. And even though I really like like some of the songs that it's showing, I really like Ghost, the one that Kid Cudi is. I, I love that song, it's one of my favorite Kid Cudi songs, but it's just like, I heard it and I was like, oh my God, it's Ghost. R really? I don't know, it just felt like it was trying so hard to be so modern and hip. As well as the second half of this movie just wasn't as good as the first, plain and simple in my opinion. I do like the concept of taking a really tragic thing that happened in this family's lives 
and showing that, but also showing how it affects the family and their lives after the fact, which is interesting. It just made for a bit slow second half. In my opinion, I was much more invested in the first half with the way it was shot as well. It was very beautiful. But personally, the second half just really dropped to my attention and I really just wasn't invested at all. Again, the performances in this thing are all around solid and it looks very pretty. And the first half is very enhanced and it, it enhances you really well, but the second half just completely loses it in my eyes. And at number 10 is The Beach. This is another Danny Boyle, not gonna get uh, too much into it. It's basically Lord of the Flies meets Shutter Island and they had a baby that's not as good. I mean, I haven't seen any of the Lord of the Flies movies, but not as good as Shutter Island. Anyways, this movie's just a uh, dumb fun. I actually did like this one uh, quite a bit. Uh, had good things about it, but I'll talk about that in my Danny Boyle video. Okay, number nine is Dune. I'm sorry. Look, if you watched my Lord of the Rings video, you would know that the Fellowship of the Ring was my least favorite of the trilogy, and that's because it centers a whole lot of world building. I guess just world building movies aren't really my thing because this totally wasn't my thing either. Now I can admit when a movie is good, this movie is great. Very great performances. I mean, the visuals are insane. The cinematography, the score, it was all there. It's just a world building movie that just left me wanting more. And that's why I'm so excited to see Dune Part 2 because I think this has opportunity to be a bit of a higher rating for me once I see what that, you know, story becomes. But it just left me like, oh, that's it. I mean, there's a couple great scenes in here, but it's like, it's just so much world building. And in my opinion, it just left a bit to be desired. I then watched American Fiction. I also watched this one for the Oscars and I had a good time with it. It was very funny. Uh, did it deserve uh, best, was this one adapted or original? I think this was original. Did it deserve best original screenplay? No, but it's not a bad screenplay by any means, even though I actually have nitpicks with it. Uh, too many instances of uh, tonal, like total tonal disaster where you'll have like a really heartwarming emotional scene and then it's just ruined by like a cutaway gag or a joke and it just ruins everything that the movie had build up. The performances are all around great. Jeffrey Wright is great. Sterling K. Brown, I think was a bit overrated. I mean, he was good, but like, really? Do you like Sterling K. Brown nominated supporting actor over, I don't know, Dominic Sessa and the holdovers who had like triple the screen time that Sterling K. Brown, I, I'm just saying. I'm just, it was just a very good, uh, fun family film. Uh, it, it is funny, it has great funny moments. Uh, I kind of hated the ending, I'm not gonna lie, but whatever, it was a fun film. At number seven is Shallow Grave. This is Danny Boyle's first feature film, and you can definitely see the way, you know, the direction that he's taking with these low budget feeling movies, because even by, I think I'm on his sixth movie right now, you can still tell he has like this low budget style to him. And even when I think about 127 hours, which just comes later in his filmography, I don't know, he has this very low budget, kind of underground feel to him that I think is encapsulated perfectly in this film as a very early stage of, in his career. The performances are all around really solid here. Of course, Ewan McGregor is standout as this goofy dude, Alex. I really like the ending. It's just a really fun kind of thriller crime movie that just had me like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. Got a bit more out of this than I was expecting, but I'm not complaining. I had a great time with this movie. I then watched Scottsboro, an American tragedy. This is a documentary about the Scottsboro boys. It was about eight uh, black boys who got uh, accused of rape and how that all kind of went down in uh, the courts in the States and all of the lying and false accusations that went around. And I thought this was a great documentary. It really reminded me of the When They See Us a miniseries that was made. Uh, it felt very similar, but it also has a very different story about that. I mean, it's two different true stories, but this one was a documentary, the other was a miniseries. But this documentary just felt so focused on what it was trying to do. I loved when it was focusing on the trial aspect of the cases because that that's so interesting to me. Um, I just, I thought the story was absolutely tragic, but it was told very well. And I definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it and you're interested in documentaries. It definitely deserved the nomination for the best documentary of that year. 
um, because this was a really great documentary that I watched in class, but I now have to write a paper on. So thank you, school. You're ruining film. Love it. Okay, number five, 28 days later. Oh my lord, I can't believe it's taken me this long to watch it. And I love it. It's great. Uh, definitely Danny Boyle's worst looking film in terms of on a technical level. This thing looks like it was shot on a microwave, let's be real here. But I think that also enhances the movie for me. It just gives it a very dark and dreary atmosphere and tone that was perfect for the film. Some great performances, Killian Murphy, absolutely crushes it. 22 years later, my boy won an Oscar, which is really funny. Of course, it has one of the most iconic openings of all time. I really like the ending and everything throughout the middle just felt really well paced. I don't really have any issues with it other than I'm just not a huge fan of horror movies, to be honest, and that's pretty well known about me. Okay, number four is my rewatch of Oppenheimer. I needed to rewatch this thing because I hadn't seen it since I saw it in theaters back in like August of last year. And uh, yeah, my feelings on this one didn't change that much, to be honest. I still think it's one of the best biopics of all time. It is so well edited. Uh, the score is absolutely gorgeous. All of the performances are great. I even love Matt Damon in this film. I think he's very underlooked. I love the way the film is structured, kind of giving you glimpses of the the past, the future, the present, kind of all intertwining. It doesn't get confusing at any point either. It's edited so perfectly to where the structure makes total sense. There's just so much to say about this film. Uh, it, 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 I mean, the way that this chain, like it, it really is one of the biggest films of all time when you really look at it. This is a three hour movie with people talking that you know, most people would brush aside that probably people don't even know who Christopher Nolan is, you know, um, and they went to go watch this movie because it was the Barbenheimer and these casual movie fans who don't care about movies and don't typically like the, these are the type of movie people who like Marvel movies. So they went and saw this three hour long people talking movie and they liked it. This movie is brilliant. It's genius. It just, you know, it's not personally my favorite thing of all time and that's just a personal thing I just I think the film is almost perfect on a filmmaking perspective but yeah it's, it's freaking Oppenheimer I mean, it's <laughs> and number three is Chinatown now I uh, yeah wow um, if you've seen Double Indemnity uh, this really old like 60s movie 50s even maybe I can't remember but if you've seen that good lord go watch Chinatown because Chinatown is even better and it, it just takes so many amazing aspects of every mystery, every thriller, every suspenseful movie I've ever seen and just intertwines them all into this near perfect film in my eyes. Jack Nicholson and Faye Dunaway give two excellent performances. You really believe the chemistry that they build as well as the mistrust and the trusting that is just thrown around and messes with your brain. It's really well done. Now, of course, Roman Polanski sucks but that doesn't mean the man can't make good films, I'm sorry. Also, the only reason I watched this is because it was leaving Netflix and it's been on my list for like forever. So I was like, let's watch it. The movie never drags, it's not ever boring. It kept my attention the entire way through, kept me guessing through the whole movie. And I just, it has one of the most shocking and most powerful and most like gut-wrenching ending like ever. Like it's absolutely incredible, but wow, it'll stick with you. And at number two is The Prince of Egypt. This is far and away my favorite new watch of this month. I mean, this and Chinatown are both incredible, but this one this is my only new five star of the month. And good Lord, it's The Prince of Egypt. The way that it tells this biblical story so well is beyond insane to me with a stacked celebrity voice cast. Like it is insane how good this movie is with all of the tropes of it looking like it could have been a total failure. And yet it's one of the most thought provoking, powerful films, animated films I've ever seen. They got nearly everything right. The way that they're able to tell such a dark and mature story through the aspect of animation, telling the Passover, the parting of the Red Sea, it's just all so brilliantly done. And I love it. This truly is a masterpiece that I, I think goes down as one of my favorite animated films of all time. And number one is Train Spotting. Uh, I didn't need to rewatch this one, seeing as I rewatched it in February and January. 
but I totally needed to rewatch it just because it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I genuinely could watch this endlessly and still have a great time. There's genuinely no flaws with it. It's a perfect film. Danny Boyle, how did you make this? I don't get it because the rest of your filmography is like, eh, at least so far. I'm watching, I'm like halfway through Millions right now and it's just like, ugh. But this movie is perfect. It has like the best script and screenplay of all time. The ending is the ending. It's perfect. The performances are iconic. It's just, how do you make a film this good? I couldn't tell you. And that is January Ranked. Uh, have you guys seen any of these movies? If you have, what did you think about them? How'd you feel about my ranking of them? And yeah, I think I'm gonna stick to this ranking format. I think it's just, it's, it's more fun to do it this way in my opinion than to just go through it chronologically. Um, uh, so I, it's just what I prefer doing to be honest. So that's what we're gonna do. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, evening or night, or whenever you're watching this and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.